Hey, Pee Wee here. Thanks for tuning in to Living in Liberty with Pee Wee. It's been a little bit since I put a video out, but uh, today I just wanted to capture maybe some of the scenery outside. Something about this time of year when you're driving uh, from Liberty to Smithville, you, you go up Snows Hill, and for those of you in Kentucky and Ohio that's never been here, uh, Liberty, we're down here in, um, in the valley somewhat. We're uh, at the base of all of these hills. We're under the hill. And those that live in Smithville live on top of the hill. And so uh, in a video that I posted some time ago, I talked about how down here we're groundhogs and in Smithville they're mountain goats. But when you're driving from Liberty to Smithville and you're heading up the hill and you're heading up Snow's Hill, there is something about this time of year when the fog and the mist is sort of rising up through the hills, it's just beautiful. And uh, the the video uh, from our camera from my camera doesn't capture how really how really beautiful it is in person. But there's something neat about it. There's something that when I see these hills and I see that fog rising, something about it just reminds me that these hills have been around a long time. They've witnessed a lot of people drive up and down these roads. Um, something about the scenery here in Middle Tennessee is just beautiful, even in the winter like this. And so I want to try to capture some of that on video. Uh, but uh, as I was driving up Snow's Hill, I got to the top uh, to Smithville or to the edge of Smithville. And, and one of the clips that you saw on the left, I kind of pan the camera to the left and you'll see a nursery over to your left. That nursery is located on the old DeKalb County Drive-In or the old Smithville Drive-In Theater location. In fact, my dad used to manage the drive-in back in the uh, mid to late 60s, early 70s, mid 70s. My dad managed the drive-in at a couple of different times. And even before he managed it, he just, he worked there. And so if you're someone that were, you, you were a teenager in the late 60s, early 70s, then uh, you probably knew of my dad, or maybe um, those of you that look back and remember the drive-in being open. Even when I was a teenager, the drive-in was open. And so um, it's a fixture there. It's, it's, it's a neat place. Well, there's a nursery there now, and uh, it's on that location. And even the sign for the nursery kind of looks like the old marquee sign for the drive-in theater. But when my dad used to manage the theater, my dad took care of he took care of the um, the projector room and the sound, um, the speakers that were out on the field there where everyone parked. Uh, my mom took care of like the ticket booth and concession stand. And we always had, my mom and dad always had teenagers that worked for them. Some of those, some of my aunts and uncles, my mom's siblings worked uh, for my dad. Some of you um, here in DeKalb can remember working for my dad, but um uh, but my dad, as he run the theater, one of the things he would do in the projector booth is that um, he would make sure that what was on film in those canisters was put on that projector, and he would take something that's kind of small, and it's on a, on a reel, he would take that and put it uh, on the projector, and he would tweak it and dial it in, and of course, there's a bright light that would push that image all the way out there to the screen that's just huge i remember as a kid looking up at that screen thinking this thing's the biggest thing in the world and listen driving theater screens are huge but uh but a strong light has to push that video in order to put that movie out on the screen and so my dad would do that and here's the funny thing is my dad was legally blind all of his life and so if if it ever got out of focus in the middle of the movie every now and then um, those reels aren't perfect. It would kind of get out of focus a little bit. And if my dad was a little slow <laughs> to dial it in, people in their cars would honk a little bit. And so then my dad would adjust it and get it dialed in and everybody was happy again. Um, but he worked on the speakers. A couple things. My dad wanted to take whatever he had, check this out, whatever he had um, in that booth, he wanted to make sure that all these people I mean, like a few hundred people a lot of times on a Saturday night. He wanted to make sure all those people could see and hear what he knew 
they needed to see and hear. That was his job, and he made it happen. You know, um, also, during those times, we lived in a single-wide trailer on the very back of the property. And then when my dad managed the Capitol Theater in Lebanon for a little while, we lived in a house that was owned by the theater company. It's kind of funny. So we sort of lived in a parsonage for a theater in both places. And actually, my mom and dad, before they had kids, lived in a, uh, worked at a, other drive-ins for this same company and would live in those type of homes. And, and now I find myself as a pastor for over 20 years. Occasionally, I live in a parsonage that's connected to the church or that's near the church. So my dad was kind of doing some of that, even though he wasn't a preacher. My dad also would go and he would somehow um, take those uh, theaters or the drive-ins that needed a little help. He would come along and sort of give it a shot in the arm and try to help it. And I look at my pastoral ministry over the years, certainly there's some times that I do some work that's characterized or labeled as revitalization. I've done some of that over the years. Um, and so I, I'm, the older I get, the more I see some things I have in common with my dad. Now, sometimes I think that scares my wife a little bit because my dad is kind of funny, uh, kind of quirky a little bit. and uh, But really, I am too. Um, but I'm thankful for what my dad put in me in that um, he would take something that he had in that projector booth and he wanted everyone to have the best experience. And so he wanted to put that out there in a way that People could see it, hear it, and uh, enjoy it. Um, part of what I do as a pastor is that at the very heart of who I am and what I hope people can come away with as a result of just me interacting with them or uh, if they come to a worship service and hear something that I teach on or preach on is I want people to get it. I want people to hear and see what God wants them to hear and see. And so so I preach the Bible. I'm not taking a light bulb and throwing it out there with a projector like my dad. But what I am doing by standing there and proclaiming the Word of God, I am projecting it out. And I am putting it out there in a way that I hope that they see and hear what God's saying to them. And certainly they can do that from just reading the Bible for themselves. I get that. But as a preacher, this proclamation of the gospel and this proclamation of God's word, it's kind of like projecting something out and um, and you hope that people grab it. And so uh, that's what I do on a weekly basis. Uh, but today I was just driving up to Smithville, had to go up there for a few minutes and come back down the hill. And I saw the, the old driving location coming up, which I drive by every single day. And, I always, and every time I go by there, every day, I think of how my dad run the drive-in there and how he managed it. And so today I shot that little bit of a video there. And um, listen, if you've watched this and in the comments, listen, if you ever went to the drive-in, had some fun experiences there, or if you remember my dad, that'd be great. In the comments on this video, let me know what years you remember going to the drive-in. Uh, I'm going to try to put some other clips in this video today of some of the flyers or the... Um, um, little promotions for movies. Uh, when I was a kid, me and my brother, Coy, and my dad, and a guy named Virgil. Virgil lived on Short Mountain Highway in this old house. He had an old lawnmower, one of those that just, you turn, it's not powered or anything. You just turn it, it has the blades. And my dad would pick up Virgil, and the four of us would go to, like, Genesco and some of these big plants, and we would put the uh, flyer for the next week's movies, we would put that on the windshields. Uh, we would lift the blood, wiper blade and stick it under there. And that's how we advertised for the theater. And it would tell you what movies were coming up and the dates and all that kind of stuff. And um, I look at that and I thought, I do a lot of that myself uh, for the Lord's work. I'm certainly in marketing a little bit as I do the Lord's work. Hey, listen, take a look at some of these photos and see if they bring back memories and leave me a comment. And thank you for tuning in or watching Living Liberty with Peewee today. Thanks.